everyone, it's Froggy, and I'm back again with another episode of Will a Wonderful World. So, we finally got- Sorry. We finally got to meet Zucko. I don't know if he's gonna end up being one of our question mark, question mark people. Can we- Can't click on that at all, and I'm assuming we won't be able to click on that one at all. So, hopefully we'll get a weird letter from him. Okay, I'm seeing green, red, blue. Okay. Alright, here we go, new person. And formula, note, and answers. Alright, well we'll start with her because we actually know her. After being hospitalized for gastritis, I learned from Mr. Wen that he had never blamed me for the photo incident. He and I were able to go back to how things were, like nothing had happened. Occasionally, some fools in the class would still gossip about us, but I had learned to stop caring and pretend not to hear them at all. As Gaokao kept getting closer and closer, everyone including those gossip idiots had to focus on the exam. Even my life had turned into a constant migration between classroom and home. I barely went to the tennis court anymore. Before we knew it, the final simulation exam was upon us. A sense of anxiety filled the entire school. Irma had it that if anybody screwed up on the simulation exam, he or she would be required to stay in school for an intensive study session until two days before Gaokao. Whoops. It was lunch break. Everyone was sitting in their own seats trying to study for one last time. My phone suddenly buzzed. A text from Jing. Breaking news! Mr. Wen resigned last week, sob. I couldn't believe my ears and turned around to look at her. She made a sad face. How could it be? The art class had been cancelled for the last two weeks. I had also been hitting the book, so I didn't realize that I indeed hadn't seen him for a while until just now. When I went to my balcony, the lights had always been off in his apartment. I thought that he had simply been going to bed early. The exam began in the afternoon. I looked at the paper in my hands, but all I could see was random gibberish that was jumping all over the place. All I could think about was Mr. Wen's resignation. Jimmy was really going at it. Half of his papers were hanging off the sides of his desk. Okay, so he's still in school at this point. A thought that had never occurred to me appeared in my head. Should I just copy it? But I'd never cheated in my entire life. But if I didn't, I would have to stay in detention for extra study sessions after school. I didn't want to stay, I just wanted to go back home as soon as I could. I took a peek at Miss Yang. She seemed to be lost in her own thoughts. I made up my mind. I decided to copy Jimmy's answers. I never knew that Jimmy was such a genius. No one ever paid much attention to him. I was writing down all of his answers when I felt a tap on my shoulder. Oh no. I had been caught. A note had been left on my desk asking me to go to the tutoring room after school. After school, Miss Yang met me in the tutoring room. She said nothing about the cheating, she only asked me to stay for the study sessions. During the session, I kept staring at my phone, hoping that he would respond to my messages. Nothing. It was 11pm when I got home. I knocked on his door softly, no response. I went to check his balcony, the lights were still off. I sat on the floor with my back against the door, thinking that I would be able to hear him if he came back in the middle of the night. 1am. 2am. It began raining outside the window. 3am. 4am. It was almost morning. What should I do if I still couldn't find him tomorrow? I suddenly had a bad feeling. Would I never be able to see him again? He went. Next letter. Oh, this is Miss Yang, then. Okay, she's the teacher. This was the last simulation exam that I would be in charge of this year. And Gaokao, the real one, would be coming up next for my students. I unintentionally let out a sigh upon realizing this. The most stressful time of being a head teacher was the senior year. Time was always tight and the job was difficult. To make things worse, I still had to watch over these pubescent and rebellious teenagers. Some of them might be over 18, but mentally they are still just kids. 
Back in my school days, I had only heard about the so-called young love, and I had barely seen any student couples. Nowadays, student couples weren't even something worth mentioning. Love triangles, gay relationships, teacher-student relationships, all kinds of stuff can happen nowadays. Well, I suppose I was already too old to understand kids these days. All I could wish for right now was for them to graduate as planned and to leave me a decent graduation rate. I needed to go and take a good vacation after the exam. The exams had been handed out and everyone was ready to begin. The bell rang. I walked around the classroom and sat back in the chair to, next to the lectern. I had been having trouble standing for too long these days. Maybe I'd been too tired, or it was just a natural part of getting older. The room felt stuffy. The cicadas outside the window were very noisy. I looked around outside the window, lost in my thoughts. Somebody coughed loudly. My mind was pulled back. Li Wen looked a little nervous and her eyes were drifting all over the place. Very few students ever realized how good the view was from up here. I didn't go towards her directly. Instead, I walked out of the classroom and circled behind her through the door in the back of the room. I realized that she was copying Jimmy's answers. I left a note. I told Li Wen to come and meet me in the tutoring room after school. I intended to talk to her about the cheating. I had no intention of reporting it to the school. I had been teaching her since freshman year in middle school. She had been through a lot, so I had always looked out for her. While her grades were never the best, her character was beyond reproach. She was not that kind of student. She hadn't arrived yet. I stood in front of the window, watching the clouds gathering over the track field. It might rain tonight. I remember the last time that I had seen W. It had also been raining that evening. He'd asked me to meet him in a coffee shop. Oh, they remembered it was raining. That's cool. He told me that he had gotten cancer and might not have much longer to live. He decided to resign from the school and leave Beijing. Maybe even leave the country, at least for a while. He asked me to keep it a secret and, if possible, to take care of all of the relevant matters when he was gone. I didn't know what else to say, so I just asked him what he was going to do. I also contacted a doctor I knew and asked him if there was any other feasible treatment plans. Later he told me that he had other things to take care of and said goodbye. I watched quietly as he walked away. As soon as he walked out of the coffee shop, I buried my head on the table and cried. I had always been so self-righteous and self-centered. I wanted to think of and do everything for him, yet I had never thought about or asked him what he would have wanted me to do. That must be why I had to watch him leave over and over again. When we had been kids, our families lived next to each other. We had known each other for as long as I could remember. He was always playing alone in kindergarten. He was never bullied or isolated or anything like that. He was just too smart, too different compared to the other kids his age. We had gone to the same elementary school, same high school, and same college. No matter where we were, he was always the best at what he did. And I had always been so proud to be his best friend. We would call each other by just one letter of our nickname. He was W, and I was Y. After we had graduated from college, he went to study abroad and I started working. I really wanted to go with him, but I didn't feel that we were close enough to broach that idea. So we parted ways, and we began to lose touch once he met his girlfriend abroad. It was many years later when we finally met again. He had lost his fiancée, and his spirit had gone with her. His life had become a mess. I nervously suggested he teach at my school. When he finally agreed to come, I was so happy, something blossomed again in my heart. However, nothing more happened between us. We could be childhood friends who could talk about almost anything with each other, but we could never become more than friends. I never had the courage to tell him how I really felt, or how I had always felt. I was always afraid that if I ever did, it would have cost us our current relationship. I just wanted to stay beside him, talk with him, and laugh with him. Years had gone by. That three-word spell that I had hidden inside my heart kept getting buried deeper and deeper. But it had never lost its power. 
It was just getting harder and harder for me to speak those words out loud. I felt myself slowly turning into an utter fool. But I couldn't help myself. Li Wen had finally come. I didn't ask her the reason for cheating. I just told her to come to the group study session. No matter why she had cheated, the study session could only help. But I suddenly realized. I was being my usual self again. I was making decisions for her without asking her about it. I could have simply asked her to tell me why she had cheated. I suppose I just couldn't change myself, right? Yang Yang. Instead of Yang Yang, really? How, how common is the name Yang Ying in Hong Kong? I don't know. All right. Room felt stuffy. The kikadas outside the window were very noisy. I looked outside the window, lost all my thoughts. Somebody coughed loudly. My mind was pulled back. Jimmy was really going at it. Half of his papers were off. Okay, so one, 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 one. And then we've got these threes here. So this means I don't think I can... Oh, I can. Okay, so I can put this here. I left a note. I know it had been left on my desk asking me to go to the tutoring room after school. So those two will automatically switch and they are supposed to, I think. Okay, so that changes nothing. Uh, okay. Why would he resign? Did he not like his job? Or was it because of... My mind was drifting further and further away. The ending bell for the exam pulled me back into reality. I couldn't even look at myself when I turned in the paper. I had only solved two problems. I left a note. After school, Miss Yang came into the tutoring room as expected. Anything I can help you with? Well, Miss Yang, do you know why Mr. Wen resigned? Miss Yang gave me a look. I thought you were about to ask me about your grades this time. Take a look at your own paper. I picked it up. It was a disaster. I honestly don't know what is going through your kids' minds these days. Yet Miss Yang gave me quite the tongue lashing. That sucked. I looked at Li Wen, who was sitting by the window. She seemed to be staring at the test blankly. Was it really so hard? A note had been left on my desk asking me to go to the tutoring room after school. After school, I came to the tutoring room as Li Wen had asked. I knew many senior students were going through a lot of pressure. But there were probably less than 10 students who would be willing to talk to their teachers about it. Nevertheless, I was thrilled that Li Wen had come looking for me. However, she was not here to discuss the pressure of the exam or going to college. Instead, she asked me about W's abrupt resignation. I was a little unprepared, but I still remembered my promise to him. I cleared my thoughts, took out her test from today, and showed it to her. I had to let her know that. Gao Kao was right upon us. It was the only thing that mattered right now. She should not be thinking about anything else. Definitely not that. Her face turned red, and white, and red again. I could still feel the awkwardness in the air after she had left the room. I knew I might be breaking her heart, but I had to do it. W would have done the same. C and bad, okay. So not this one. We'll try that. I took a peek at Miss Yang. She was looking out the window and seemed to be lost in her own thoughts. What was she thinking about? Could it also be about Mr. Wen's resignation? <sighs> Why the hell was I thinking about that? I was such an idiot. I stared at the paper as hard as I could, but I still couldn't focus. How pathetic. What should I do? If only there was something to help me focus on the exam. The time for the exam soon ran out. I could already see myself sitting in the mandatory study session after school. I left a note. After Miss Yang came into the tutoring room as expected. Anything I can help you with? Well, Miss Yang, do you know why Mr. Wen resigned? Miss Yang gave me a look. I thought you were about to ask me about your grades this time. Take a look at your own paper. 
I picked it up. It was a disaster. I honestly don't know what you're going to do. Tongue lashing, that sucked. Just when my mind came back from wandering, the bell signaling the end of the exam had just rung. Everything had gone well. I know it had been left on my desk asking me to go to the tutoring room after school. After school, I came to the tutoring room as Lee Wen had asked. I knew many senior students were having a lot of pressure. Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, we've seen this. Okay, I have an idea. Pulled me back, and then Jimmy. She can keep looking outside. This should work. A thought that had never occurred to me appeared in my head. Should I just copy it? But I had never cheated in my entire life. But if I didn't, I would have to stay in detention for extra study sessions after school. I didn't want to stay, I just wanted to go home as soon as I could. I took a peek at Miss Yang, but she seemed to be lost in her own thoughts. I made up my mind and decided to copy Jimmy's answers. I never knew that Jimmy was such a genius. No one ever paid much attention to him. The time for the exam soon ran out. I took out another exercise book after the exam, but my mind wasn't in it. I left a note. After school, Miss Yang came into the tutoring room as expected. I confessed to her about everything involved in the cheating on the exam. She crossed her arms in front of her and stared into my eyes. Why did you do it? Because I couldn't solve any of the problems. She kept staring at me with even more intense look. It wasn't a hard exam, at least not for you. I, I couldn't focus, and I have somewhere that I have to be tonight, so I was worried about having to stay for study sessions. I couldn't think of any convincing lies right on the spot, so I told Miss Yang the truth about everything. About why I couldn't solve the problems. About why I was unwilling to stay after school. Even the truth about him. I fell into silence when I finished. I grabbed onto my skirt tightly and lowered my head. I couldn't even look at Miss Yang in the eyes. Aren't you neighbors? You should be able to see him anytime that you want, right? I... I just have a feeling... That I have to. I must see him as soon as I can, otherwise I might. I had no idea what I was talking about, but Miss Yang laughed. She was laughing, but tears were coming out of her eyes. Kids these days. I'm really envious of you, you know that? I guess. You could call it a sixth sense. Mr. Wen, he's got cancer. Miss Yang wiped away her tears. Stomach cancer. Late stage. Just when my mind came back from wandering, the bell signaling the end of the exam had just rung. Everything had gone well. A note had been left on my desk asking me to go to the tutoring room after school. After school, I came to the tutoring room as Lee Wen had asked. I knew many senior students were going through a lot of pressure, but there were probably less than 10 students who would be willing to talk about to their teachers about it. Nevertheless, I was thrilled that Lee Wen had come looking for me. We were chatting casually about the day's test when she suddenly started crying. She was sobbing when she told me that she had cheated during the exam. What surprised me the most was a reason. I was at a loss. Once upon a time, I might have had the same honesty and courage that she had. But at some point, I had turned into this middle-aged woman who would be gossiping about other people in the office. I knew it was just a waste of time. I knew those fake compliments we kept telling each other meant absolutely nothing. But I'd still locked myself into this mundane life, day after day after day. That day, Li Wen and I talked so much. Like we were truly best friends. About cheating. About Gaokao. And about W. Sorry, W. I broke my promise. Okay. Uh, can we... Do we have to switch that? Oh, no, we don't have to. Okay. And then and I printed my head. Should I just copy it? But I had never cheated in my entire life. But if I didn't, I would have to stay in detention for an extra session. Didn't want to stay. I just wanted to go back home as soon as I could. To compete with Miss Yang, she was lost in her own thoughts. Made up my mind, decided to copy Jimmy's answers. Never knew that Jimmy was such a genius. Paid attention to him. Kind of the exam scene and ran out. I took another exercise book. At the end of my mind, wasn't in it. A note had been left on my desk asking me to go to the tutoring room after school. After school, Miss Yang was waiting for me in the tutoring room. She told me that I did exceptionally well this time and encouraged me to keep it up. 
She even told me that if I had needed any advice or help with anything else in life, I should feel free to come talk to her. I kept thinking about her words on my way home. That was the first time that she had ever said something like that to me. It felt a little strange. It wasn't too late when I got home. I knocked on his door softly, no response. I sent him some more texts, no response either. His lights were off the whole evening too. And just when my mind came back from wandering, the bell signaling the end of the exam had run. Everything had gone well. I left a note. I asked Lee Wen to come and meet me in the tutoring room after school. I knew many senior students were going through a lot of pressure, but there was probably less than 10 students who were willing to talk to their teachers about it. Li Wen had been through a lot with her own family, and I had decided to give her some encouragement before Gao Gao. We greeted each other, and I told her that she had done well on today's test, and to keep it up for the Gao Gao in a few days. She was barely paying attention, though. She seemed distracted, she, and she wasn't following the conversation the whole time. I figured I had said what I wanted to say, so I sent her off. And then I saw her from the window, running out of the school like an innocent little deer. That kid. She didn't have a worry in the world, did she? Well, W, I will make sure to keep my promise. Rank A. Okay. I took a peek at Miss Wang. She was looking out the window and seemed to be lost in her own thoughts. What was she thinking about? Could it also be about Mr. Wen's resignation? <sighs> Why the hell was I thinking about that? I was such an idiot. I stared at the paper as hard as I could, but I still couldn't focus. How pathetic. What should I do? If only there was something to help me focus on the exam. The time for the exam soon ran out, and then I could already see myself sitting in the mandatory study session after school. A note had been left on my desk asking me to go to the tutoring room after school. After school, Miss Wang was waiting for me in the tutoring room. She told me that I did extremely poorly this time and that I had to stay for the study sessions today. During the session, I kept staring at my phone, hoping that he would respond to my messages. Nothing. It was 11 p.m. when I got home. I knocked on his door softly in response. I went to check the balcony, the lights were off. I sat on the floor with my back against the door, thinking that I would be able to hear him when he come. Nah, nah, nah. Raining. It's almost morning. What should I do if he doesn't? If I still couldn't find him tomorrow? I suddenly had a bad feeling. Would I never be able to see him again? Just when my mind came back from wandering, the bell signaling the end of the exam had just rung. Everything had gone well. I left a note. I asked Lee when to come and meet me in the tutoring room after school. She did unusually poorly today, almost dropping to the bottom of the class. It was very unusual. Lee Wen had been through a lot with her own family since Gaoka was almost upon us. As her teacher, I had decided to give her some tough love. However, no matter how hard I scolded her, she was barely paying attention. Other than the occasional yes and hmm, she didn't look like she was listening at all, not to mention self-reflecting. I suppose I shouldn't go overboard either. I figured I said what I wanted to say, so I sent her back to the group study session. I shouldn't wind her up too tight. Oh, this one's tough. All right, all right, let's do Stuffy Jimmy coughed. Note was left on my desk. Just all of it on your side. I looked at Lee Wen, who was sitting by the window. Okay, this sounds like we got it right this time. And she was looking back at me too. She should be focusing on her test. I shook my head and signaled to her to get back to the test and she lowered her head. Half an hour later, the exam was over. A note had been left on my desk asking me to go to the tutoring room after school. After school, I came to the tutoring room as Lee Wen had asked. I knew many senior students were going through a lot of pressure, but there were less than 10 students who were willing to talk to their teachers about it. Nevertheless, I was thrilled that Lee Wen had come looking for me. However, she was not here to discuss the pressure of the exam or going to college. Instead, she asked me about W's abrupt re resignation. I was a little unprepared, but I still remembered my promise to him. 
I made up something on the spot, telling her that he had gone traveling abroad. Her eyes lit up when she heard my lie. She asked me a few other questions about schoolwork before she eventually left. She was very polite and nice the whole time. But the moment she closed the door, I saw her turn around and run away so fast that her hair was flying behind her. And then I saw her from the window, running out of the school like an innocent and joyful little deer. For a moment, I thought that I had just seen my younger self. I took a peek at Miss Wang, and she was staring right back at me. I was so startled that I almost jumped, and suddenly I could understand the questions on the exam again. Thank goodness. Whatever, I needed to finish the exam first before worrying about anything else. If I screwed this up, I wouldn't be able to go anywhere after school. I left a note. After school, Miss Wang came into the tutoring room as expected. Anything I can help you with? Well, Miss Wang, do you know why Mr. Wen resigned? Miss Wang gave me a look. Oh, him. He said that he wanted to go travel abroad for a little while. He said he'd come back in a month. He went traveling abroad? For a month? Gaoka would be over by then. I was still hoping that I could ask for advice on what college to apply to. Although, as long as I could still see him, it would be okay. Meanwhile, I needed to work hard for that one last exam. All right. Whew. That was a long one and my throat is starting to get sore, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and, oh wait, we should check out Miss Wang. Yang, Yang, Yang. Okay, this is what she looks like, very pretty. Math teacher at Yingnan High School, confident, confidant, Wen Zaoren. This is her card. All right, cool. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you wanna see more videos from me, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.